In this video, we are going to use the epsilon Kronecker delta identity to prove this vector identity. A triple cross product equals the hopefully familiar back cab identity. Now, one thing that we pointed out, I think it was in video number nine, was sort of the pattern of this identity. Here we have epsilon, epsilon, and the first index is match, and all others are different. And this is equal to inner, inner, outer, outer, minus inner, outer, outer, inner. Now suppose we had, we're multiplying together two permutation symbols, and the matching first index was a K. It's the same pattern. It will be inner, outer, minus inner, outer, outer, inner. Same pattern. So these are, remember that pattern you can think of then how to um, manipulate these symbols or these indexes accordingly. Now, here we have A cross B cross C. What we want to do is, in general, is write our vector expression in a component form. So we could call this B cross C, we could call that vector D. So we have A cross D, that would be this expression of course, and that will equal epsilon A D times some unit vector. And we have no preference as to what label we use, we'll just call it I. Then this can be J, and that is K. So epsilon J K I, and we know from our previous videos that A cross D, its ith component then is just this part of the expression. Epsilon J K I A sub J D sub K. But now D is this cross product. So D sub K, we should be able to get an expression for that in terms of B and C using, of course, the uh, epsilon permutation symbol. So we have D equals, that's B cross C, so that would be epsilon B C times some unit vector, and we want a kth component, so this will be k. And we can't use i or j here, those have already been used, so we'll label this L and label this M, so this will be epsilon L M K. And again, we use K here because we know from our previous videos that this is D sub K. So this right here in component form A cross B cross C. It's ith component that's the same as A cross D, it's ith component, equals epsilon J K I A sub J times D sub K, but D sub K is this, so you have epsilon L 
M K B sub L C sub M Now we look at these and we realize that there's a common index a K. Now here epsilon LMK that would be the same thing as epsilon K L M because we're permuting twice once twice that's an even number so this and this would have the same value and L M L M the indexes match so you can write K L M here that's valid and then with our identity that was times KIJ well here we have delta JKI but let's look at this JKI if I move the K over here once that gives us KJI if I move this over here that's KIJ we moved it two times that's an even permutation so JKI that's the same thing as KIJ so this equals epsilon JKI go from here to here we shuffle these around twice that's an even permutation so here JKI we can have KIJ so we write this as KIJ now we have KIJ KLM and of course what we're doing here is as we've been doing in all of our previous videos with these types of problems summing over repeated indexes from 1 to 3 and multiplying the scalars the order in which we multiply doesn't make any difference so we could take a sub j and put it over here like this and we have epsilon kij times epsilon K L M and that's equal to this so we're going to substitute this for this so this is equal to Delta I L Delta J M minus delta I M delta J L this is this right here I L J M I M J L I L J M I M J L and then we have these scalars A sub J B sub L C sub M okay and as you saw us do in video number 10 we're going to consider now what effect this this pair of Kronecker deltas have on these scalars minus this pair of Kronecker deltas has effect on these scalars so we look and we say this will equal delta I L this is 0 unless I equals L but on this side here there is no I but we can consider the equivalent expression this would be 0 unless L equals I then we have a repeated index then it equals 1 so our B sub L becomes a B sub I and here this is 0 unless J equals M so 
J is now M, so we have A M C M. Let's review that. This is zero unless the I becomes an L, but there is no I on this side. But equivalently, we could say this is zero unless L becomes I. So that becomes an I. This is zero unless J equals M. So this J becomes an M. That's A, M, C, M. Then we have minus Again, this is 0 unless i equals m, but there is no i on this side. So we can make the equivalent statement. It's 0 unless m equals i. They have delta i, i. That's 1. This becomes i. So we have c, i. Delta j, l. That's 0 unless j equals l. So that j is going to be an l. So you have a, l. B L. Now, A M C M. That's component form for A dot C. So this equals B sub I A dot C. minus CI ALBL that's component form for A dot B and what is this equal to? That is equal to the ith component of this triple cross product. Now what we can do is I can say well the reason why it's the ith component is because here we just arbitrarily chose that to be i. We could have called j or k. Wouldn't make any difference. So if this is the ith component equals this, well, that had to be the same for the j component and the k component as well. Perfectly true. Or what we can do is let's multiply both sides of the equation by the unit vector EI. Multiply this by EI. Write it down here. And multiply this by EI. BI times EI of course that's just vector B. This is vector B times A dot C minus CI, this is a C, CI EI, that's vector C. And up here, this height times this, that's the whole vector. Remember, in general, we can write vectors, say, vector x is xi ei. We've been writing it like that ever since the first video. So that means then that this, this times ei is just that triple cross product, a cross B cross C. And there we have our identity. So for this video we had to realize that this can be expressed with different indexes but we follow the same pattern that we had discussed back in video number nine and then when we got to this part of the problem here, realizing, yes, this is zero unless i equals l, so we have a repeated index of l, l, but there is no i here. But equivalently, we could say, well, 
L has to be I, gives us delta II, that's 1. Therefore, this L becomes an I. And we had encountered the same situation over here. I M, I has to be equal to M, but there is no I here. Equivalently, we could say M has to be equal to I, that gives us delta II, that's 1, and that becomes an I. So we had to think about it a little bit during that step there. Um, but okay, that's it for this video. Uh, again, it's another demonstration of how elegant this technique works. And we'll have a few more examples and uh, some more videos that we'll be posting soon. Uh, the playlist for all those videos is at the uh, website digital-university.org.